Welcome to Conversations with Cheryl Weston. And um, today's program is going to be rather short because we're dealing with the Omaha City Council agenda for October the 8th, 2024. Um, and there's not a whole lot that we're going to be getting into. So, um, in fact, we're going to get right into it. Hopefully. Um, there we go. And so we want to delve right in. This should be a very, probably with an hour program um, for the city council agenda. It won't be for tonight's program, but the city council. So let's begin. Let's go back up here. Um, basically, there's not too much to like I said, it's happening. Um, it starts off with the liquor license. Shouldn't be a problem there. Um, those are public hearing and the vote is today, uh, unless there's some opposition. But I see no reason when you look at the attachments that there would be any reason not to approve them. Um, same thing as you go down through the uh, Elkhorn um, campus for Metropolitan Community College. Not much going on there that shouldn't pass with no opposition. And one of the things it tells you anytime it has this planning board recommendation, it's pretty much a done deal, as most everything is on with this city council. And then we've got our usual um, TIF increment. Um, and this is for um, two million dollars, two million six hundred sixteen dollars. There is attachment, but there's nothing. That attachment is just explaining what the tip is. It's a public hearing. The vote will be today. Um, again, I I don't see anything that would be where it should make any difference. It should pass. Um, what I will notice, this is down on 12th and Nicholas, but right here, it's going to be 78 market rate apartments, 78 market rate, no affordable housing, which is all the big deal that they're supposed to be all out making this noise about that we need more affordable housing. This is market rate. So um, the consent agenda, these items were held for the public of, um hearing which was last week there's nothing on there that i can see that anybody's going to have any objections to um the only one that we mentioned last week that there might be was this 2307 um north 7 or 2307 n street that there might be a possibility that if the folks didn't negotiate there would be um it outlines here condemnations proceedings would be undertaken and completed. So that's not much there. Those all those items should pass. Um, motion needed for 23 through 34. These are also, I see nothing in there that won't pass. Um, if there's anything in there that I kind of question, but it's not means that it's not going to pass, would be item number 26. Um, and this is the agenda item for Olson's professional service. And the only thing I say about this, this is always seems like Olson Inc. They're one of the favorites and they always get these professional service contracts. And I would love to see, um, what is it? Flatwater Press or Nebraska Examiner or Omaha World Herald, who has a staff that could look into, um, look into where um, the professional service agreements, there should be a breakdown of who they go to and how much and uh, which ones they seem to be getting. And like they say, follow the money. There just seems to be something when you follow that money, why is it always certain uh, organizations or companies always get the contracts with the city. Um, as I said, there's there's nothing in there that I can see. Um, boom, 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 boom. Nope, 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 nothing. Um, final reading on um, item number 35. Again, there's nothing there. Ordinance on second reading, public hearing today. Um, here is again, property owners to 
providing that the city negotiates with the property owners for the land acquisition, permanent easements and temporary construction easements. Those will all be. So there's nothing there that, you know, I could see no op uh, opposition. And let's look at it's the last ones that I want to really delve into. Um, nope, 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 non-action items. And when you get down, here's where I really want to make sure that we start looking at. Um, 47 through 50, those were all going to be um, first readings October 8th. Special use permits, no problem. Another TIF project which will pass 149 units. Um, this is the Millwork Hotel involves with the rehab of this historic building for the use. And I think this is neat for TIFF. This is TIFF, a boutique hotel with 135 upscale rooms. How much is this TIFF going to cost us? $10,297,186. And it would be no surprise if this would, um, and those amounts would increase. Um, probably the only person that's going to object to this one will be Larry, as usual, which, you know, he has a point. Um, moving along, nope, first reading. Here's we're getting into what I really wanted to start talking about is here again, is a programs when items 57, and I want people to understand items 57, 58, 59, 60, and 61 that we're going through. This is just for the city council to approve the acceptance and authorized disbursement of grants that the city has received. Um, and so I'm not going to talk about saying, hey, don't accept money when it's given. My problem with it is look at who the money keeps going to. And there's, you know, people out there in the community who always tell me, well, follow the money. Well, why aren't you following the money? Why don't you speak up? Why don't you see that some of this money goes more to your organizations instead of the same old, same old ones? Um, as just to start with, as it says in this attachment, here is a grant, Nebraska Crime. This is the Omaha Police Department and the Douglas County Attorney. They were awarded on July 1st. It will go through the award period is July 1st, 2024 4 to June 30th, 2025. Who's involved? Same old, same old. So, you know, nothing's going to change if people don't get out and require a change. Um, and like I said, I'm not opposed to the grants. I'm not. I'm just saying that when these grants are are researched and, and searched out and completed, why isn't it that more different groups from the community uh, stakeholders are involved. 58 was one of the first ones I really want to take a look at. And this is the uh, Office of Justice Programs for Community Violence Intervention Training and Technical Assistance. If you click into this and you go to page 11, here's the scope of the work. Pre-meeting preparation, strategic planning facilitation, these are all dynamic as the Omaha community, da, da, blah, 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 same thing, same thing. But here, there will be three sessions, the period for the city of Omaha. One will be for non-provider community groups to focus on how they can engage and support. Well, who's going to be known? Who's going to be invited to this? One, three sessions, well, law enforcement role and how they can work together. And one of the three sessions will be the community violence intervention intervention certification. I can't even get that one out. Um, so all of these, my point is, who's going to be at these meetings? Who is going to be invited? And, you know, you go through here and if you take time to look, you can see um, when they talk about the different um, problems. Um, these are a lot of transportation costs to go to these conferences or to the ones that's going to be held here in Omaha, Nebraska. Um, 
I just want to bring it out to some people is you there there is a lot of different groups other than the three which we're going to get into. Sexually, let's look at item 59. Um the Justice Department program. This is going to run from October 1st, 2024 to September 30th, 2027 to address specific gun crime gang violence problems within the target district. How many of you who are sitting out there, how many of you are in there, do you know what is the target district? And is your organization part of what they're trying to do, supposedly trying to do with this grant? And if we look at this, um, page 26, I wanted to bring up is it's gun related crime is an ongoing problem in Omaha, Nebraska. Well, we know that. And there's an increase of the gun. They go through the process and the numbers. But here's where we I wanted to take and bring out is page 29 here. The the district parole uh, target area is OPD patrol districts 37 through 39 with districts 34, 41, and 42 serving as the control districts. How many of you out there know what districts those are? Ask some questions, folks. Stop allowing this all this money to come in to fight the programs that you're trying to develop and that you have as a grassroots organization or community organization that you've been, built trust up with people. Do you know? Do you know what those districts are? Eight documented sets of gang claim territory within this target area. Because I know there's some of you out there who know Um what the target area for gangs are. Approximately 321 active documented gang, gang members reside within the target area, representing 13.6% of the gang population. I think that's important. And you move down to, let me go to, yeah, here's page 30. Here's where I have a problem. The University of Nebraska Omaha School of Criminology and Criminal Justice. They were in the planning. Community engagement input. Who do you think that's going to be? Omaha 360 intervention and prevention meetings. Meetings are attended by the OPD gang and unit command staff, community-based organizations. Who are these community-based organizations? The same ones, same ones, same all the time. Why don't you search out um, and get more of the grassroots organizations that really have ties, the gangs respect and so forth, and they can talk to these. And I'm looking at this and it says federal law enforcement, faith leaders, business owners, and community leaders. You go to these meetings every Wednesday for two hours, practically, and then what happens? I'm watching a press conference for the death of uh, Mr. Ford, or I'm watching the press conference for Mr. Pitts. So where is all this happening with these gang deals relating every Wednesday that you're doing? How come there's no prevention here? These are those that are killed by the police. How many of them were? We had one that was killed um, we've had like, I don't know, five, six in the last six, within the last six months. Well, if there's all this implementation and all these meetings that are weekly, how come that is on a, in high and increasing? And what's really depressing is because we're getting younger groups, 13, 14, 12, something's wrong here, folks. And the money, follow the money. The money's going for this but where and who is it going to? Here's a part. I wanted you to look at that. As part of this ceasefire model, gang and gun offenders are put on notice that they face swift and certain consequences for carrying firearms. The target group of probationers and parolees reside or are associated within the target area. What does that say? Those are blatantly targeted. So if they're targeted and they know who they are, why, why is the violence on an increase? 
And here's the other point that I'm really, outreach communication. Public outreach is conducted throughout the regular participation in these collaborative meetings and community meetings, neighbor events and talk. Are they? Are they really? Omaha gang officers engage with youth that the Boys and Girls Club, um, the PACE, which that was put a hold to, and then they changed it. Douglas County Youth Center and the YMCA. If they're doing this, then how come crime is on the rise? So I wanted to look at that. And then there was one more page I wanted to bring to your attention with this particular item. <clears throat> Here we go. And this is what I highlighted. This is a letter from the chief of the police. Um, and we further affirm our commitment to furthering the identical goals and identified goals and objectives by reducing gun and gang violence through the following program activities, conduct specialized operations and coordinations with the state, on and on. And here, right here, this is what I'm complaining about. OPPD, moreover, affirms a commitment to participate in meaningful. What do you consider meaningful? Because something's wrong. Every incident that we particularly have had within the last six months, particularly those ones involving youth with guns and so-called gang members, each one of those firearms were found. Something's wrong here in this picture. If these individuals are committing these acts and they're found to have guns, because when the charges get filed, it's a um, filed because of a individual having a gun who shouldn't have one, on and on. So my problem, it's not that I don't want the money to go into the, I just want the money to be more circulated. I just want to see some of these individuals that I know have some good programs, very good programs, but they can't keep going because they can't get the money because you're not demanding. If you are going to be, if the city of Omaha, that you elected these elected officials and they're going after these grants, you ought to be out there demanding, why not me? And if there's something that you're not doing, then they ought to be able to tell you what does it take to become more involved in when they submit these grants? Because once they put the grant, it's more like a lot of grants, you got to follow it. And then if they're not following this, who's who's watching? Who is watching? Who's overseeing? Um, 60. Item 60, again, it's all about the money. And I, I do not, and I want to make it clear, I'll repeat it over and over. I am not opposed to the city getting these grants. I'm just opposed to the way the grants are received and issued. This is one, when I looked at it and I was like, no, I didn't read that right. It's 200. Th no, this is a grant, 2 million, 2 million. Okay. Now look at the attached. And I want to go to, I don't want you to have to scroll through. So let's look, because I did read this. I don't just bring it before you and not have read it or researched it. Um, again, community violence, particularly gun violence in Omaha, has risen in recent months due to increased gang activity. My thing is, if you having these meetings every week and it's supposed to be the community individuals, why is it that then this gun violence is? Something you're doing is not reaching those. You claim that there's 371 gang members. So you actually know who the gang members are, and you're probably watching some of them. How, how does it get this? And this money is funded. Here's what I have. This proposal will build up on the formalized collaborative partnerships among the city of the Omaha mayor office. And of course... There's the King, African American and Power Network, and Omaha 360, and the University of Nebraska at Omaha School of Criminology and Justice, and the Nebraska Medical Center. 
efforts will also fund the co-creation of community safety strategies led by grassroots street outreach and intervention partners, providing capacity while capitalizing on the momentum and trust built between the community and systems. So what am I saying? Why aren't you, instead of talking on our little limited social media about what's not right, then why don't you take and say, here it is, I'm putting it out there to you. These proposals, this is what they are supposed to build upon right here. So if that's the case, why aren't you notified? Why aren't you involved in it? Here's my app. I'm bringing it to you. So before the October 22nd meeting, because they don't meet on the 15th, um, why haven't you contacted the Omaha City Office, Mayor's Office, and said, hey, how can we be involved in this grant? And I apologize, I have sinus problems. And so you, you'll see me and I do my nose, I can't help it. But I didn't want to miss out on being able to present this to you. Now, I'm going to send this to um, uh, some of the groups that I know of. And I'm saying, here, get out and take and go to the mayor and demand to get some of this. But it's always the African American Empowerment Network in Omaha 360. I watched North Omaha Turn Back Tax Committee, uh, tax uh, uh, review that they had set up to explain what was going on in the process and to get the applications in by September 30th. Okay, my thing is, I'm like, you organizations are out there ground for this little competing for this little chicken feed. And I'm not saying you shouldn't, you should, but here's big money and here's programs that you should be involved in. And you know what? It's probably programs that you could really make a difference in the youth, in the crime, so forth, because you have connections, you have built relationships with the um, uh, individuals that they're supposed to be helping. I'm saying don't go to the African American Network Omaha and Network Empowerment because you know what you're going to get from there. And then you want to talk about what you don't get. Instead of talking about it among yourself, do something about it. Go to the city's office and complain. Write letters, talk, call, or whatever you have to do to the grant office. Write to your city. You elected the mayor. Get something out of it. And also, not only that, the target area in the districts for here, why aren't you contacting City Councilwoman Johnson, City Councilman Hug, and City Councilman Bagley? Because those are the areas where you're going to find more of the problems that they're supposedly going to assist in. Why aren't you? Instead, what you'll do is you'll sit back and talk on our, like I said, limited social media that we have. It's like uh, First Sky or or William King show, um, there's another radio station. So you get out there and you talk about this on that, but you won't say anything publicly because you know you go underneath these assumed names or something. There is money out there. We're going to look at, let me show you how much money. We talk about this grant's already $2 million. Um, Let me see what I had on page 26. I wanted to show you um, before I get into that. Um, I thought there was something. Oh, here it is. Aggravated assaults were set. This is up 53, is balanced at 53.4% male. Black or African American victims are the largest racial and ethnic group in the law enforcement's data. They have this stuff, folks. They know who it is. Again, all this money goes to three or four same groups over and over. I want to go to page, um, here we go. Let me see. Here's some of the things. It's by June 25th, July, right here, 2025. By June 2025, these are some of the things that are supposed to have taken place. How many of you know that? You know? 27 goes on. Here's gold one. Let me get back to this. Case management service to include the whole family response. Really? Because you know what? All you can do all this, but if you, especially our youth, if you don't help, them help the family, you it doesn't make much difference what you do because guess what? 
they have to go back to that home environment. So it needs to be part of something with the whole family is involved. Um, What's my next one I'd like for you to look at? Yes. Uh, page 30. Huh? Okay. What was... Here again, it's like the only group is the Empowerment Network. That's not true. The Empowerment Network will list you as a collaborative partner, but what do you get out of it? You don't even know it. You don't even know if your name is on there, if your group is on there. But here again, their objectives. They've been doing this for how many years? Since 2008. And what has, have you seen the real benefit? And they say um, the Empowerment Network out, out reach program personnel at all levels as they expand street outreach efforts to individuals at high risk for violence. Would you say that so? Let me ask you, Mr. Uh, Sherman Wells, who is very well known within the community and respected by these different individuals. He knows them. They respect him. How many times have you been encouraged to participate and you shouldn't have to volunteer you should be paid just like the rest of these folks are making this money but you got to get out there and we got to demand this for our our group we got to demand that we be having this if we're not we need to let these groups who authorize this the justice department and any other one that's going to give money to say this is not what's happening prove it um let me show you this Here's what I'm looking at. And I thought, you know, this is the budget. Look at this budget. Because this is the Nebraska Medical Center contract. Oops, got too fast. Get excited. <laughs> Sorry about that. But year one here is, um, let me get up here. Here's what I looked at. A violence intervention specialist, community engagement coordinator. So if this is it, how do you know that this position is going to be available? What? How is this going to be reached? Um, well, how are they going to review? But no, it's all left up to the Nebraska Medical Center because this is what they're supposed to be looking at, the violence. Um, and so I'm saying to you, why aren't you requiring your council members instead of letting this go and say, uh, yes, we all vote six to seven to zero or six to zero, six to one. My point is, if this is out here, you should be saying to them, I want to know what can I do? How can I do? How can you assist me in getting information to the Nebraska Medical Center? And even yet, our city council should be requiring when they look at this is to say, what is the plan? The money is there. It's going to be there. What can they do to say, you know, how are you reaching out to my constituents to fill these positions? Okay. Again, they're getting this and that every year once this, they hire someone, this community engagement coordinator, it's $75,000 a year. And what is the you know, what is going to be the process? How are they going to have, how are they going to host community um, meetings other than two hours on Wednesday at the Empowerment Network Center? Who's being empowered? Come on. Um, I wanted to look at page 54. Um, let me get back up here. I know it's probably won't, you know, um, won't be looking at it anywhere. People will just say, okay, well, it's business as usual and so forth. But maybe, you know, if you keep saying something, maybe it'll start sinking into somewhere. Um, personnel, again, like I say, Nebraska Medical Center. And let me see here, when you get down towards the end, where does it should be coming up? Um, those are all... Empower, oh, university, here we go. 
um, University of Nebraska at Omaha. Here we go. Look at the cost. For three years in Nebraska Medical Center, $609,000. Unbelievable. If I wasn't looking at it, I wouldn't believe it. Um, and here, oops, sorry. Um, it talks about the University of Nebraska, Omaha, and we have these different things that I city council will say, oh, well, the university is like this problem. Poverty um, assessment, they're going to be doing it for free and stuff. People, somewhere in there, the grant money is already there for the individual to do this, to do those assessments or so forth. And this is just an example of that. Um, year one, here you go. There's different funds. And I'm going through it so fast um, because it's not for everybody but it is for people who are working out there. Year two, here you go, $81,251. And here's the reason. Principal investigator salary. Principal investigator summer salary. Uh, investor salary. Graduate assistant salary. So nothing is done free. The only thing is done free is when they ask volunt grassroots organizations to volunteer their time. Um, second year, fringe benefits. It just goes on and on. You can see this money that is out there and being given to the same organizations. So when you get down here, year three um, is requesting 81251 in year two of the project. And then all the way, let's get all the way down here. University of Nebraska for this grant will receive 268,174. Okay, now we come to African American Empowerment Network. Um, administrative coordinator, $50,000, $50,000. Did you know what? I look at this and I almost laugh is because uh, although other groups aren't getting anything in the African American Empowerment Network is, they're requesting $50,000 in year two for the project period personnel. And look at that. Chicken feed in, in cess to what the others are getting. So they you in uh, University uh, Medical Center is paying $75,000 for a coordinator engagement. And African American is getting $50,000 in year two. Um Empowerment Network Data Management and Evaluation. Can you believe this? $65,000. Um, unbelievable. Year two African American Network contracts, subtotal of 469500 So I keep telling you, they're not your friend. They're not. And I... I know that Willie Barney's going to see this, and I don't believe in throwing stones at glass walls or at glass and then run and hide. I, if I throw the stone out there, I want them to know what I've said. Because what I'm only saying is here are the facts. I'm not saying something that's untrue. I'm saying here are the facts. Why isn't this being questioned? And yet and still, there will be, and this is just this amount of money from grants. When the budget and so forth comes around, guess what? There will be um, another five hundred thousand to a million dollars that will be given to the empowerment network from that. And I wanted to look at this one. Healing is the healing circle and restorative justice. Forty thousand dollars is funding for contracted healing service justice. The contractor will provide healing practices and services to individuals and families impacted by violence. It is anticipated that the contractor will lead four eight-week healing circles with 25 participants each and will be compensated $10,000 per session. Now, to me, that's chicken feed when you look at what else they're doing up there. My question is, who is going to be the healing 
is the Healing Circle Restorative Justice, because I know of several restorative justice. I bet you I will lay money on it that they won't be one of the ones here that will get this eight week uh, possibilities of uh, healing circles with 25 participants each. That's an extremely high number to make for to have any really, how should I say, success at reaching restorative justice. This is just to say 25 participants each. So that's 100 participants in these um, four sessions, total of four sessions, not going to work. The requesting a $65,000 referrals and meditation. People, and I'm talking about you North Omaha, particularly uh, programs that are trying to fight for that little $10,000 in the North Omaha turn back tax. Look at here. Why aren't you questioning this? Can you believe this? Cognitive behavioral therapy. And I'm like, okay. This is really needed in this community. Again, I'm not saying these aren't, but look at the numbers and look at the cost. The contractor will provide services over 12 sessions. This is here what I'm saying. 25 at-risk individuals at a rate of 165. How many do you think that's going to be in this is going to have a success rate? It's not going to happen. And each year, year three, there's another $50,000 for this administrator and coordinator, not for the contract, but for just the administrator of this program, $50,000. So year two, African-American Power Network, total of $519,500. Unbelievable. And my thing again, I'm not opposed to these groups, my problem I have with is that it is not being fairly um, dispersed to organizations that maybe don't have as much clout as the African Empowerment Network. And this is follow the money. Well, look here. African Empowerment Network total um, was request, requesting $1,057,287,000. This this should not be. There needs to be more um, transparency of who will be this. This will be one of, if the healing is the healing circle, I can kind of tell you who will be involved in that. It will be one of the favorites of the African-American network. But will it be some groups? Um, I would like to see where's Untamed Unlimited in here. I would like to see um, groups such as the therapy groups that's my, the name is mistaken. I can't think of it right now, but it's located on North near um, uh, 52nd Street, 56th Street. There's um, there's a Native American Indian, um, Lavelle, who has groups that would help. And they're, the ones that they help are within these districts. Are they being involved in this? So I'm bringing it to your attention. Now, if you don't do anything about it, that's your problem. But you can't say you didn't know because it's out there and you just need to go after it and demand more. And you need to hold your elected officials more accountable because they all ran on this transparency and accountability, which is a total joke. OK, um, and pretty much that's all those items, those last grants. Oh, there is one more on item 61, which is another grant. Um, The reading will be up. Uh, October the 8th, the actual open um, um, hearing, public hearing and vote will be probably, well, the public hearing will be next week or the 22nd because they don't meet on the 15th. And this is another really important one and particularly among young um, uh, individuals um, who are within the district, black and brown, those are individuals that really need this grant here to help with suicide prevention because it's on the rise. Um, so that's pretty much 62, item 62. 60, those are going into the bonds and lease agreement, and those are all first readings. And what you have to remember, folks, is this first reading means that 
that's the way it has to be set up. The second one will probably be always the vote or public hearing and the vote, or they will move to public hearing and then have um, the third one will be the actual um, reading with the vote. The point is we need to stop letting this stuff happen. Each time these things happen, it just means more and more individuals are not truly being reached. It means when we allow these things more, the tax rates going up, the levies go, all of this happens because we don't speak up and we have an opportunity. The um, We are encouraging people to go out and vote in the national vote um, that's coming up on October, November 5th. But as soon as that's over, people, we've got to get out and start pushing for um, our local, which will be our some of our local offices, the um, uh, city council, the mayor, those types. We need to get out and start pushing and ask questions. And um, as I say, you know, maybe we need to clean the swamp. What do you think? Thanks for tuning in. We look forward to next week. Well, we won't have one next week because they don't meet. So it'll be on the 22nd when we have the next one. Have a great evening and thanks for tuning in with Conversations with Cheryl Weston. If you like it, hit the like button and subscribe.